interest on that first $3,500 as long as on paper the student shows need financially. In other words, the expected family contribution plus the other financial aid that Clarion is giving the student or scholarships that the student has gotten from outside sources um, is not in excess of what we anticipate to be our annual cost of attendance for the year, okay? Um, we put that on there. We know that not everyone will want their son or daughter to be in debt or to take a loan, especially that freshman year. You may say, you know what? I think we're okay. We don't need to have him or her borrow now. You always have the right to change your mind. You can take out a student loan at any point in time during the academic year. You can wait and do it their sophomore year, okay? The less you have to borrow, obviously, the better for the student. Remember that Stafford loans are actually in the student's name. So unlike when they borrow money, at least that maybe this is just in my family, but I don't think so, you know, my kids are borrowing money for me, and in all honesty, I have really zero expectation that I will ever see any of that back. You know, my best hope is that somehow they'll find me a nice nursing home when I'm older and I need them, this kind of care. Um, but that's really not much of a, you know, whatever, guarantee. The federal government is not like that. And they are, this is the official first time that your soon to be 18 year old or already 18 year old child can officially legally go into debt. Yay, the American dream. Um, it's not a bad thing though. I will tell you that in moderation, borrowing only what they need, okay, it's not really a bad thing because the students are more invested, I think, and as long as they're ex it's explained. You know, this isn't high school. This is no longer a guaranteed free opportunity. You also are going to be taking responsibility for getting your education. And the first step is if you are taking out the Stafford loan with the federal government, there's a commitment there that I'm going to class, I'm earning my credits, I'm progressing towards a degree, and when I graduate, hopefully I will have you know, the skill set I need to find a job that not only allows me to pay my student loans off, you have up to 10 years total to do that, but it also gives me access to a career I actually like, so I don't have to fight to get out of bed every morning and go to a job that I'm just like, oh, I hate this. Um, so that's the whole purpose. And it actually, ironically, does help them also establish good credit by taking out loans, and once they're out of school, making those monthly payments, because it is repaid on a monthly basis, six months. They, the feds give them six months after they graduate before they start them on repayment on Stafford student loans. Um, it allows them to build a positive credit record, because sometimes not having any credit record, because you don't have any debt, you've never shown whether or not you're responsible and you're paying it off, is just as bad as having a negative, uh, you know, too much consumer debt. So it's just something to think about. That Stafford loan that shows up in the estimated award letter will not disperse to his or her student account come September unless he or she also does two other things. The federal government requires that the student sign a legally binding master promissory note. And honestly, you don't want to do that before. I always recommend, right, and this is kind of ironic, I guess, here you're all happy because we're having graduation parties and I'm done with high school and congratulations, moving on. And by the way, let's spend half an hour and do your master promissory note and your Stafford loan entrance counseling. It seems like an odd time to do it, but it kind of makes sense. If you do it now, our system's going to be like, wait a minute, we got this application, but he or she, they're not here. So what are we supposed to do with it? Um, the computer, does, it's an open-ended promissory note that's good for up to 10 years. Um, you really want to wait until we're done processing aid for this year for the current students. So again, do filling it out in May or June works really, really well, okay? Um, it doesn't, it's ironic. You can fill out the master promissory note, which is the legally binding, I will pay this back. Bad things can happen to me if I don't, like you could garnish my federal wages if I become a federal employee. I'll never get an income tax refund if I don't pay this back. Um, you can do that much quicker than you can actually fill out the entrance loan counseling. The federal government is, and I, to be fair to them, they have made it this way because they really want to impress on students. Um, you know, this is for real. This isn't something that's going to just be, oh yeah, yeah, I'll pay you back, I'll pay you back. So they take them through, they educate them about what their rights and responsibilities are, the six month grace period. They actually have them come up with a budget. 
And it's a pretend budget because they have no idea what kind of actual, um, they might have a sense of what they're going to make when they graduate, but sometimes they're, they're still exploring what their major is going to be. But you have to come up with a budget, and they want to bring home to the students that this is a 10-year commitment, okay? Um, you really want to be conscious of everything that you borrow so that you're not getting excess money that you really don't need, and you're stuck with this larger monthly payment at the end, you know, when you graduate. So they want you to be cautious about that. I had a parent call me one time. The, get, the federal government redesigned their entrance counseling last year, and she was very, very angry. And she said, I can't believe what these people are making me answer. It took me almost an hour to fill out that entrance loan counseling. That's just ridiculous. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, and you're trying to be tactful. And you are the parent? Okay, you realize, and, and not to be rude, but I'm like, that was supposed to be for your son or daughter. That's not meant to take your time as a parent. I understand you want to help them, and sitting there with them is great. But she was agitated that it took that much time from her because she tried to do it at work. And I'm thinking, your son or daughter is nowhere around you. They obviously didn't benefit at all from that entrance loan counseling. Um, so again, it, and I know I am, I tend to be rather a controlling kind of parent. I mean, they would agree, definitely. It's hard to imagine that you go to bed as a high school student who needs to be taken care of, and is your homework done, and are you up in time to get to school, and did you have breakfast, and you know, I'm gonna take care of everything, and all of a sudden, you've got a university, bing, you know, the next day after you graduate, he or she is an adult. They are protected, their privacy is protected by law. We can't necessarily answer any questions that you may have, um, unless your son or daughter tells us it's okay. Um, we're going to send all of our communications directly to the student not to mom or dad. And this is like, really? Because if you're waiting for my kid to pay the bill, for, you know, that's gonna be a long time coming. I'm the one that pays the bills. You need to let me know. Um, and we run into that quite a bit. Uh, at orientation, which will be, you'll have an opportunity to have your son or daughter, and you're welcome to come as well. It's a day long event during uh, late spring. And then we do it again in early summer. They're called orientation days where they register for classes uh, they actually meet with different professors, they meet with different offices, and one of the things that they get that day is a form that says, I, whatever their name is, authorize, and they can authorize both parents, a grandparent, nice lady down the street that always gave them a Christmas money, it, it can be anyone, or multiple people. But these are the student people that can call into our office and get specific account information. They can, we can actually tell you Instead of saying, well, how much do you think you still owe? You know, and, and parents are like, what, seriously, this is a guessing game? No, but technically, I am violating the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA. If I give you specific information about your son or daughter's account or financial aid that they haven't told me, or their schedule, if you want to know what kind of classes they're taking, um, if I give you that information without them authorizing it. And again, you get a lot of very perturbed, parents saying, this is nuts, he's 18 years old, you know, there, there's no way he knows that you printed an invoice, a bill, you know, you need to send that to me. I would love to send it to you because I need to get that paid, but the law says I can't, I have to communicate directly to the student. So it's kind of an educational process both for the students and for the parents um, to go through, and we try to walk you through that during the orientation period. We're gonna be part of Discovery Weekend this summer as well. So hopefully we'll get everybody on the same page there. These student loans, if you um, decide, like I said, that you're comfortable with your son or daughter borrowing the $5,500, that's the maximum that he or she can get on their own. There is no credit check and you as a parent are no way ever responsible for paying that back, okay? Um, it has nothing to do with a co-signer or your credit or anything. There are other loan products out there where as a parent, we can become a borrower and borrow through like the Parent PLUS loan. As a parent, uh, you can say, well, you know what? I have other children at home. I can't borrow a parent loan for you. And then what do I tell your sister who's coming up and going to graduate next year? Because there's no way I can do two loans, you know, for the next 